Want to know what goes into making a great horror film? It's alive! Turn on all the lights, check under the beds, grab those knives, and let's start dissecting fear. Today, we're going to tear open music. From the savage, dissonant strings of Bernard Herrmann's psychoscore to the eerie synthesizer strains of Disaster Pieces score to It Follows. Some of the best and most memorable music comes from horror movies. Music sets the tone and in doing so tells a story, often before any other aspect of the movie does. Take one of the opening scenes of The Witch. Without music, as the family rides off towards the majestic wilderness in front of them, they could be in any kind of movie. A different score could imply a soaring adventure or compelling drama. Instead, composer Mark Corbin establishes an unsettling undercurrent, foreshadowing the horrific nightmare that ensues. The music informs us that the moment the family was banished from their village, they are no longer safe. John Carpenter's Halloween handles tone deftly as well. Despite the sweet sounds of singing children echoing through a small, sleepy town on their favorite holiday, the score, starting with the strained, atonal synth line and coupled with the creepy POV watching two teens making out, tell us everything we need to know from those opening moments. These kids and this town are in danger. And Carpenter knows how to set a tone and signal to the audience that danger is coming. He creates the perfect ambiance of foreboding, playing an incessant single note over and over every time Michael Myers appears. It's slow and relentless, just like Michael, adding that extra layer of dread to an already terrifying scene. In fact, music played such an important role in Halloween that after a scoreless cut of the film was screened for an unimpressed executive, Carpenter realized the only way to save the movie was with music. Composers often add to their part of the story by using unconventional sounds and instruments. If there's one thing that scares people, it's something they can't identify. In the film Hereditary, Colin Stetson used his own voice and various clarinets to make a familiar sound, a low string instrument, and give it an unfamiliar quality. That toys with our expectations. It sounds like a string instrument, something we recognize, but it's weird and unnatural, working on a subconscious level to create distress, and highlighting that nothing we see or hear in this film is what it seems. Years before Robert Moog developed his influential modular synth, the Troutonium, an electronic musical instrument invented in the 1920s by Friedrich Troutwein, terrified us in horror films like Alfred Hitchcock's The Birds and the 1960s English thriller The Strangler of Blackmore Castle. Composer Mark Corvin needed some original, creepy sounds for the supernatural thriller The Witch but the right instrument didn't exist for what he had in his head. So he commissioned guitar maker Tony Dugan Smith to assemble what has to be the world's most unsettling instrument, the apprehension engine. Although uncommon sounds can be frightening, there is another more common one that evokes just as much dread. This, of course, is the infamous Jaws score by John Williams, and a good example of the monster's theme, a cue that sets us up for a Pavlov's dog-like experience. Whether we can see the shark or not, once that familiar theme starts playing, a shiver goes up our spine. It's like the music is the monster. We don't need to see it to know it's there. And considering the problems the production had getting the mechanical shark to work, the music takes over and does what the visual of the shark itself couldn't. Gets our adrenaline rushing as we search the screen, wondering where it is and when it's going to show itself. And it's thanks to a repetitive two bass note melody. Which, music scholar Joseph Cancelero suggests, mimics the shark's heartbeat. Then it picks up in pace, the tempo pulling us and the tension building to its terrifying climax as John Williams' score becomes one of the film's most critical storytelling tools. But don't let the music fool you. It isn't your friend and it never wants you to get too comfortable. The music can spend time conditioning us into believing it's our guide. Then it stops and pulls the rug right out from under us for a truly effective thrill. You have to stay on your toes in a horror movie. Nothing is what it seems. You're gonna need a bigger boat. 
Because music can also be a diversion. It plays with your senses and offers you something more palatable, something sweet and melodic, a comfortable sign that you've made it through the nightmare and the light of day is here to run the ghosts away. Please, never trust the music in a horror movie and never trust the silence. Ever. One of the most important things to remember about the music in all aspects of making a horror film is that the great ones use a mixture of techniques. They don't just rely on the sting or the monster's theme, they use them all at different times, in different ways, to manipulate and terrify us. Because nothing is scarier than the unknown. <laughs> and on that note, I think it's time to hide our tools and bury the body. Make sure to congratulate yourselves, you made it out alive this time. Don't forget to share your favorite horror film scores and what you love about them. And check out... I mean, honestly, I did warn you. Subscribe to Gamma Ray and let us know in the comments what your favorite horror film scores are and why you love them. This is Suzanne Kiley, and we'll see you on next week's Dissecting Fear.